Hello YouTube and welcome to another Elder Scrolls lore video. Today we're talking once more about the Accession War, the Argonian invasion of Morrowind. Since the old video I made is slightly outdated and its narration is quite bad. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the Accession War. The Accession War, or the Argonian Invasion of Morrowind, is a largely unknown war by a lot of people that happened in the very early 4th era, only 6 years after the Oblivion Crisis, and only 1 year after the eruption of the Red Mountain that had devastated Morrowind even more after the events of the Oblivion Crisis. The cause of the war, as far as we know, were the years of enslavement of the Argonians by the Dark Elves, since over the course of several eras, the way the Dark Elves obtained their Argonian slaves was basically just invade Northern Black Marsh, raiding all the towns and cities in the north and capturing the surviving Argonians, and then just use and sell them as slaves. This caused the Argonians to likely enact their revenge in the form of an invasion when Morrowind was weakened by the eruption of the Red Mountain. So they saw a weakened Morrowind and thought, well, why don't we do the exact same thing they've been doing to us, to them. Another likely factor for the cause for the war was the state of the Argonian armies and the perceptions of military strength on Tamriel after the Oblivion Crisis. Because after the Oblivion Crisis, Black Mars was the only province which has actually been able to defeat the hordes of Oblivion by themselves. While every province was bleeding and the Empire's military crumbled during the Oblivion Crisis, the Argonians, with the leadership of the Hist trees, managed to turn around the Oblivion Crisis themselves by not only stopping the Daedric hordes, but forcing the Daedric hordes to close the Oblivion Gates by swarming into Oblivion with their own hordes of Argonians due to their excellent coordination by the Hist. This was all without any outside help by the Empire or anyone else. I think that those factors together actually give a pretty good explanation of why the Argonians would invade southern Morrowind. Basically to enact their revenge and, well, just because they thought they could. Their army was way superior to the scattered forces that the Dunmer had left by this time after the Oblivion Crisis and after the Red Mountain. That said, the information on this invasion is also scattered and littered with conjecture, so in this video I have to make do with the little pieces that we have. So mind you that certainly with the war map that I show, there is lots of speculation on the locations and basically we have only scattered locations confirmed. We have some facts that I'm all showing on the map, but a lot of the precise locations that I show are speculation, so keep that in mind that you have to keep the locations on the map with a grain of salt. So. Since the motive of the attack is most likely slavery, my best guess is that the start of the war, the Argonians would have their first landing in the region of Dashan, because this southern region is the home of House Dress, one of the houses of Morrowind that's very closely associated with slavery. Therefore, I think they first took this region near Tyr, and then probably sacked and conquered Tyr and the cities and towns around it. Another reason why the Argonians would start here is because the Argonians were led by the Ancelil, a heavily nationalistic political organization. Very basically, their goal is to return Black Mars to the time before it was occupied by any foreign forces, be it the Imperials or any other faction. Argonia for the Argonians, that's basically their unofficial motto. If you want to know more about them as a faction and their policies and what they stand for, I recommend watching my video on them, which is in the description. Anyway, back to the war. The Ancelil will probably first set their eyes on the southern region near Tyr, also called Dashan, since it's largely swampland and could be interpreted as a sort of extension of the Black Marsh, so extension of the swamps. Therefore it's likely that this part the Argonians kept occupying after the war, because the Ancelil might see it as something that was once Black Marsh and actually belongs to the Argonians. And we know that the Ancelil kept occupying some lands after the war, but more on that later. After taking the Shan, we know that they sacked Mornhold, the capital of Morwin. My best guess is that after conquering the big swamp part of Morwin, that the Ancelil were just pretty satisfied with themselves and were like, well, we don't really need any more land, but it's time for more revenge, because they saw how weak the Dunmer actually were. So they probably said, let's sack the capital of Morrowind and make them pay for all the years of slavery even more. So then they likely went in a straight line to Mornhold, sacking and pillaging all the cities on their way. And we know that during the invasion, Mornhold was sacked and pillaged so bad that it was no longer in the shape to be the capital of Morrowind after the war. And that the capital of Morrowind was moved to Blacklight, the capital of House Radaron, far, far from the reaches of the Argonians. 
After this point, the Argonian forces moved further north towards the inner sea of Morrowind, uh, towards the crater of Vivac City, where the Argonians occupied the Scathing Bay, which is basically what is left of Vivac City after the impact of the Ministry of Truth, or the Bar Dao. According to some sources, they made it even further, and they made further landings on Vardenfell, and sacking the cities along the coast of Vardenfell, and presumably then they wanted to start moving further towards the Morwind mainland to sack more cities. But at this time, however, the great houses of Morwind had finally managed to more or less unite, and they brought a fighting force of their own under the leadership of House Radaron. And since we have no stories on other sackings around Morwind, I think that the army of House Radaron, reinforced by the other great houses of Morwind, met the Argonians somewhere in the northern mainland, for example, in these places, while also having their armies kick out the raiding Argonians out of Vardenfell. After this, with great casualties, we know that the Redoran army was actually able to hold the Argonians and drive them back into the swamp. However, once they reached the swamps of Morrowind, I don't think they came very far since we know that Argonians fight really well in the swamp. And we know that the portion of Morrowind is still controlled by the Argonians within the swamps. And that the Argonians, well, again, are just the most superior fighting force in the swamps. Thus I think that the new border between Blackmarsh and Morrowind is probably somewhere here on the borders of the Morrowind swamps. And thus the accession war was over. In the aftermath of the war there were thousands of dead Dunmer and tens of thousands of Dunmer refugees that had fled north during the initial stages of the war. And they fled to the northern parts of Morrowind and to eastern Skyrim and also to Solstheim. These people just couldn't go back to their homes because it was now occupied by the Argonians after the war. Another effect of the war was that House Tlalu, a house sympathetic to the Imperial Empire which didn't help Morrowind during its time of need, was permanently expelled from the Council of Morrowind and was replaced by a new house, a great house, Sadras. Now, there's this one little tidbit which hasn't been talked about in my original video as I did not know it back then, but after the Siege of Mournhold, the Argonians moved further north towards the ruins of Vivac City, as was featured in the video. These Argonians occupied the crater of Vivac City and apparently performed rituals in the crater. Why? We don't know. We don't know what kind of purpose there was to these rituals and whether it was an objective of the war, whether those rituals in the Skating Bay, so in the ruins of Vivac City, were perhaps the main objective of the war. Uh, we don't actually know, but it's specifically being mentioned in the Elder Scrolls novels that there were rituals in the crater, which gives me the idea that there may have been some relevance to it, but if there is, we definitely don't know what it was about. It might have had something to do with the hard stones flying from the Red Mountain, which we can also find in Soul's time and which contain fragments of power. So that might have had something to do with the objective of the war, um, but the bottom line is unfortunately that we don't really know. Anyway. That was the Accession War. If you want to know more about the Ansleel, again, a video on that is in the description. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed it, be sure to return for the next Elder Scrolls lore video. And of course, as always, before I end this, allow me to mention my top Patreon supporters. Bernardo Binda, Gabriel Binda, Athena Iotis, Doji, Polarized Poutine, Sar Mikhail, Sword of Bushido and Mr. Christmas. These amazing people, along with all the others on screen, keep this channel alive and for that I am very grateful. That said, I will see you all next time in the next Elder Scrolls lore video. Bye bye.